Hugo Boss created quite a storm with its latest trademark challenge. Apparently, the designers sent a cease and desist letter to a multi-award winning Welsh brewery based in Swansea, Boss Brewing. When a big brand enforces its trademark rights against a small entity, it inevitably risks being branded a bully, so situations need to be handled delicately to avoid becoming an example of how not to manage a global brand. You see, the general public are not aware of the intricacies of trademark law and often find trademark cases surprising. There is incredulity that an ordinary word like boss can be monopolized by anyone. Many people don't even realize that similar names could infringe on someone else's trademark rights. So the complexities of trademark law mean that cases in the public eye are painted as unfair where there is a David and Goliath situation. There are many examples of how trademark protection extends to similar names and big brands that claim rights over elements of their names. For example, Book, Easy and Mac were the subject of trademark disputes by Facebook, The Easy Group and McDonald's. Boss Brewing had secured a trademark registration for its logo, having applied to protect its name on the 23rd of October 2018. The registration covered classes 32, 33 and 43. So the company was protected for drink products it sold and restaurant services under that name. Generally, a logo registration primarily protects the visual element rather than the word alone, but it does provide some protection over the name where the name is ownable and legible, as it is in Boss Brewery's registration. Now, from the BBC interview that um, comedian Joe Lysep gave, he's now actually renamed himself Hugo Boss by Deedpol in a bid to mock the design company. Now, from that interview, it sounded as if the design group had objected to the use of the word boss in the name Boss Brewing, and that did indeed seem ridiculous to me, so I decided to take a look. However, according to a Law Society Gazette article, the dispute actually centred on Boss Brewing's use of two beer brand names which it had not registered, namely Boss Black and Boss Boss. Details of Hugo Boss's challenge. Now, a quick look at the design company's trademark registrations in the EU and UK reveals a plethora of registrations covering classes 3, 18, 25 and 35. These are essentially the categories for cosmetics, handbags, clothing and selling through an online e-store. The company does have other categories covered, but none for beer products. So anyone looking to check a name before registering their mark would therefore find no existing registrations for beer products and would assume that they were on safe grounds to use their chosen name and register it. However, well-known trademarks have broader protection than other marks. This means that even if a famous brand has no trademark registrations covering a particular category of goods and services, beer in this case, it may be able to successfully challenge use of a name on the grounds that the applicant is seeking to take advantage of its reputation in using a similar name. 
Uh, it's always going to be easier for a well-known mark to object to another person's use of a name the closer the name is to its own and the more similar the products that they're selling are to what the famous mark is known for. Even in clear-cut cases where anyone would agree there is a clear copying and similarity, Hugo Boss would have needed to prove its reputation in its trademark and to substantiate why the other side could be said to be taking advantage of its reputation. However, even if Hugo Boss succeeded in demonstrating the reputation of its trademark for clothing and other goods, the question would have arisen as to whether the consumer would make a link between the two trademarks where there is no similarity of products. As a luxury brand that's active in several segments, it's not impossible that Hugo Boss could sell beers as well. And if the IP office accepted that, then a link can be made. Would people automatically think of Hugo Boss just because the word boss appeared in the name of a drink? Here, it's noteworthy that Hugo Boss uses the brand names Boss Hugo Boss and also Boss Black as is clear from the extracts of its EU trademark registration shown on my blog. In essence, as the dispute was about the use of the brewery's brand names Boss Boss and Boss Black, their legal advisors probably realised that the company would do well to settle the dispute and rebrand rather than put up a fight. So we will never know how the IP office would have regarded the case. A PR disaster. The issue turned into a huge PR disaster for Hugo Boss because of the intervention of the comedian and the story that got around implied that the design group was objecting to the brewery's use of the name Boss Brewing and as such, opposing the free use of language in the generic term boss. But it was a PR disaster also due to the way the company has conducted itself in past cases. Doing some quick Google research, I noted numerous examples from around the world where the company has indeed been somewhat overzealous in enforcing its trademarks. For example, it unsuccessfully opposed an Israeli company that has applied to register this logo mark, Treeboss, in Israel for eyewear, sunglasses, and eyeglasses. Then, Mark's IP reports that Hugo Boss failed in its attempt to stop the registration of Boss Wash in a Spread Eagle logo at the Japan Patent Office. And in a case involving an application to register Carlo Bossi, Hugo Boss failed to stop a cosmetics brand from being registered as an EU trademark. The WTR reported in 2018 that Hugo Boss was accused of bullying a charity's use of the term boss, dark girl boss. The founder of that charity made a big fuss about the cease and desist letter she'd received from Hugo Boss, asking her not to use the word boss due to concerns around brand confusion. She stood her ground, arguing that the fashion brand was ridiculous for sending such a letter. She said, they're acting like dictators that are bullying me and stopping the formation of a new movement to empower black women. So she went on to complain that they have all the power and money in the world. Her outspoken rejection of the company's arguments succeeded. 
She has secured her trademark and has gone on to use the name for her book and her website. So in conclusion, it's clearly important to stand your ground if you have a strong case and to settle if you're on weaker grounds. I'm not aware of the full facts in this case, but clearly lack of resources to fight when you're up against a big brand like Hugo Boss is a big reason to settle unless you have a strong case. In this case, the decision to settle was probably wise because of the use of Boss Boss and Boss Black. That really put the brewery at a disadvantage. They were using boss twice and also combining boss with black. It wasn't just a case of them using the word boss, therefore. The takeaway lesson from this case is that as it's really expensive to change the name of a product, it's even more important to seek legal advice on your proposed name before proceeding with it. The advice might cost a few hundred pounds, but you can then look to your legal advisors for compensation if they gave you the go-ahead to use a name that later proves problematic.